Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian Uzeshi. Blessed be my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for yet another opportunity to teach his own precious word to his own precious people. Today I am teaching on a very important subject which I have titled, There is an End to Your Problems. You know we live in a fallen world <clears throat> where the Bible says that Satan is the god of this world. Many problems come against people, even Christians. But this is not the will of God. Many Christians believe that these problems come from God. That it is a way to increase their piety or their humility or even their association with Christ. But we know this is not what the Bible says. In James chapter 1, verse 13, the Bible says, Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. He says, For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. Even though we live in this world, we are not of this world. So today, I'm going to take you through scriptures to teach you why these problems come, even to Christians. And I'm going to teach you also where the problems come from and uh, how to overcome these problems. Because the Bible says, surely there is an end and the expectations will not be cut off. If you are new to this ministry, this is Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian Uzoeshi. I have a YouTube channel. You can always access my iCav on YouTube. I have so many teachings there that will help you with your Christian work. And these teachings are made available free of charge to all the people, to all countries. And if you would like to help us, send these teachings even to more people at no cost. You can use the information on the screen, the address showing on your screen and send your donations. For your prayer requests, for your questions and testimonies feel free to send me an email using simple truth gospel at hotmail.com it will be on your screen or simply can write using the address that is showing on your screen uh, before we go before we continue with today's teaching let us release our faith together father in the name of jesus christ i pray for the utterance that I will speak today boldly to your people as the oracle of Christ. Make my tongue as the pen of a ready writer. Father, I pray for the anointing of, of the Holy Spirit that is already in us. Anointing that will teach us today, guide us, enlighten us. Anointing that will bring the truth. Open the eyes, Spirit of God, the eyes, the ears. The heart of each and every one listening to this message today, wherever they are, give to them what you want them to receive from today's message. Give us answers to our many questions. Open the eyes of our understanding. If there is something that you have showed us in the past and we let them slip us by, please we ask you that you will show us again. For we always propose to be not hearers only, but doers of the word of God. Father God, none of me, but all of you, and Jesus Christ, be praised and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, today I welcome you to today's teaching. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said earlier, Today, I am so excited to teach on this very important subject, which I have titled, There is an End to Your Problems. You know, like I said earlier, we live in a fallen world, in a world that has so many problems. And the Bible tells us that Satan is the god of this world. And it tells us that the whole world lies under the influence of the wicked world. But remember, even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. We have been delivered from the power of darkness. But the thing is this, so many Christians believe that our problems are things that are associated with God. That God will send problems your way just to increase your piety or your humility or your association with the cross of Christ. 
So because they have wrong teachings, they've had so many wrong teachings in the past, so they believe. And when problems and situations come their way, they don't fight. They just stand there and say, it is the will of God. Uh, God knows why. And, and they don't do anything, giving Satan the authority and that, uh, and that uh, leeway to go on rampage, r ravaging their lives and bringing so many hard times in their part. So for today's teaching, what I'm going to be teaching you is very, very important. So make sure you stick to the end of today's teaching. Because I'm going to be telling you where these problems, why they, why they come to us in the first place. Because remember, Christians, they have been delivered from the curse of the law. And we have authority now over Satan. But why is it then that sometimes these problems, they will come to Christians? Today I'm going to be telling you why. And uh, where the problems, where they come from. And also, what to do. How to get these problems out of your way. And walk in the victory which Jesus Christ has called you and I to live. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So remember what I say is in James chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible says, let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. He said, neither tempts he any man. So if you're saying that these problems are coming from God, and this is how you've been taught in the past. Today is a day to make that change, to know that problems are not from God. He is for you and not against you. So that is what the Bible says. And, um, and it says that God cannot tempt you with evil. So they are not from God. Now, if you are going through stuff, if you are going through problems, the first thing that you have to understand is that these problems are not coming from God. The number one thing to do is to understand this. That this is the work of Satan. That is the number one thing to do. Because the moment you understand that this is, is not coming from God, you are one step ahead. You are close to victory. Because Satan, his modus operandi, the way he operates is to deceive you, to make you think that these problems are coming from God. In that way, you sit back, you don't fight, you don't resist it, and then he will sit there and put these problems on you. Remember what the Bible says about Satan, his uh, portfolio, his criteria, the thing that is known for. The Bible tells us in John 10.10, 10, the only reason why he shows up, he doesn't show up to give you a good time or to bless your day. No. He said there is one reason why he shows up. is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is what he does. He knows how to do it the best. So if anything, the first question you got to ask yourself, this problem, has he come to steal something from me? Has he come to destroy something in my life? Has he come to kill? If the answer to this question is yes, then this is automatically Satan. You've identified that this is Satan that has brought the problem to you. Remember that he has every authority to be in this world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible calls him the God of this world. And it tells us also that uh, we, the whole world lies under the influence of the evil one. He is that evil one. So when Adam handed authority over him, when they committed high treason, that was when he took over the power. He stole it. That's a matter of fact, he stole the earth because it wasn't given to him in the first place. But Jesus Christ came. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He came and he restored that dominion to you and I if you're a Christian today. But why is it that some Christians are still hemmed in? In this is a, is a trickery. Why are still some Christians falling into these devices? He's, he's maneuvering. Remember the Bible says that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. He doesn't come through the front door. 
he makes it look like it's coming from God. And how does he do it? By influencing some ministers to preach this from the pulpit in churches. Telling Christians that uh, the problems, uh, once you live in this world, uh, these problems will come from God. That God will try you to test you just to see uh, how humble you are. Just to test your, your, your piety. Are you hearing me, somebody? This, these things, we call them the doctrine of devils. They have been preached from the pulpit. So that's what Satan wants you to believe. He wants you to say, okay, this problem is coming from God. Who knows why God has this in my part? And then you don't do anything. You don't fight. You don't resist. You don't do nothing. You just sit there and watch him. Now, the, another lie that he will try to tell you is this, that you are the only one going through this problem because God has put it on you. So he make up these lies and he, he will feed it to your mind. And then uh, uh, he, he continue presenting them to your mind or until you buy them. Which is very wrong. Remember in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, he says, same affliction, same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the word. So he's telling you the troubles. The troubles. You are not the only one. He says your brethren, there are some or there are some of your brethren too. And when he's talking about brethren now, he's talking about Christians that are going through the same problem that you're going through. And very soon I'm gonna tell you why this problem come to us in the first place. So you will know why if you're going through them, the reasons why they are there. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible says, No temptation taking you, but as is common to men, such as is common to men. He says, No temptation taking you. So there is no temptation that you're going to say, This is a, a specific one. This is custom made for me. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> there is no custom made. Temptations is the same Satan, you know. In millennia, two millennia, he has he has done the same thing to the to, to people. So he cannot say this is just me. He tried to present these lies to you just to see, just to make you uh, 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 believe that this is from God. He's giving you a special trial. He wants to test your faith and see how strong you you believe in Him. Are you hearing me, somebody? So these are the lies of the devil from the pit of hell. So now, I'm going to give you now reasons why these problems are not from God. Remember I told you earlier that we have been redeemed from the cause of the law. That's what the Bible says. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So, the, there are three fold curses from the law, if we would put it that way. One of them is spiritual death. And if you want to find out where I got this from, read um, Deuteronomy chapter 28. It gives you all those, uh, the information is there. So, curses of the law. One of them. One of them is spiritual death and then the other one is poverty and the other one is sickness so bible tells us that christ has redeemed us from this cause of the law they don't they don't have authority over us anymore so we if you are in there where you have been delivered already there is a uh, there is a, a reason why you are there. Is either you are there out of ignorance or you are there because you refuse to walk in the light which you know. I'm going to sp speak more on this one just later on. So now, I'm going to give you scriptures to show you that the problems and the troubles that we go through life is not from God. They are not from God. 
Remember in uh, Psalm 35 verse 27, the Bible says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them continually say, let God be magnified who delight in the prosperity of his children. God delights in the prosperity of his children, not the other way around. He doesn't delight in tempting his children with problems and situations. It's not of his, that is not his character. He says he delights in the prosperity of his children. The Bible says he always gives us victory through Christ Jesus. And he causes us to triumph. These are the things that the Bible says about God himself. He says in 1 Timothy <clears throat> chapter 6 verse 17. The Bible says he gives us all things richly to enjoy. This is the, this is the God that I know. He gives us all things richly to enjoy. And all things that pertains to life and godliness has been given unto us. All things that pertains to life and godliness. Not all things that pertains to troubles and uh, situations that are not um, welcoming. No, no, no. But the thing that pertains to life and godliness. Remember in 3 John verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prosper. So the, the, the will of the Almighty God is for you to prosper, not for you to have troubles. Troubles in your way. No, that's not his delight. He, he doesn't take pleasure in those things for his children. Every good gift and every perfect gift come from above. The Bible says they come from the Father of light. In whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. So every good gift and every perfect gift. If they are not what I'm saying now, if the situation that you are facing is not a good gift or a perfect gift, they did not come from God. Because these are the things that God will send to you. Good things and perfect things. If God be for me, who can be against me? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8. So it means God is always for us, for his children. He has given us all things. He's blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me, somebody? So now I have given you scriptures that when you are going through problems and troubles and difficulties that are not from God, even though God will permit them, are you hearing me now? Even though if you open the door, God will permit them to come in. Because you are a free moral agent. You can choose the way you live, what you want to do. God will not stop you. He will not hinder you. But they don't originate from God. These things have been preached from the pulpit. And the moment you have that consciousness, that belief, the understanding, that troubles don't come from God, and even when they show up in the life of a Christian, they don't last forever, then you are in the path of victory. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you getting hold of what I'm saying? These things are very important because it all starts from how you believe and what you believe. If you believe wrong, you're gonna, your life will be in that direction. And you're going to be in situations that are not of God because of your own belief. It can be because of ignorance or unpersuadableness. Which means you refuse to walk in the light which you know. That's what it is. So now... How, we, we, I have already established to you through the word of God too many scriptures that these things that they don't come from God. So the question is this. We are left with one option where they come from. And that option is from Satan. Whose resume reads 
steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he said in his resume. <laughs> so he's the one that brings the trouble the way, in your way. So now how does he do it? Is the question. We say that we have been delivered from the curse of the law. That even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. That we have now power and authority over Satan. That he is on our feet. But why then are so many Christians hemmed in into so many problems? Difficulties. To some people, as soon as they're getting out of one, another one present themselves. So why is it why is it so then? That is a big question. How does he do it? Even to Christians. We know how he does it to, to his children. When I mean when I say his children, anyone who is not born again is not a child of God. By default, they are children of Satan. Jesus Christ talking to the Father says, He says, You are of your father, the devil. He called the devil their father. So we know we, we have only two families on us. The family of God and the family of Satan. There is no middle way, no middle path. You cannot be in, in between the two. It's either you are born again and you are of the family of God. Or you are not born again and Satan is your father. So we know that uh, those ones that are his children, he owns them already. You know, he can do whatever he wants to do to them. But how does he succeed in bringing it to children of God? Because you and I, we know that we go through problems and situations and troubles every now and then. So how does he do it? We say he, they don't come from God. They come from Satan. But how does he do it then to, his own, to even the children of God? How does he bring these problems into their lives? He does it by open doors. Did you hear what I just said now? Yes, he will do it by you opening the door to him. He has no authority to put them on you by force. He, he, has, he, he has been stripped. In Colossians 2.15, the Bible says, Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them. Jesus Christ has already spoiled Satan, all his emissaries, cohorts of hell, power of darkness, principalities and powers. He spoiled them all. He made a public show of them. They are all defeated. So he has no authority to come and put something on you by force. No, he can't. But he has this device, a way of for trickery. Very crafty being. He will come when the door is open. He cannot open the door. Are you hearing me? The door he comes in must be opened by you for him to come in. But two influences. He can lead you into opening that door by yourself. So how does he do it? By when you open the door for him to come in. And you can open the door to Satan either by ignorance or by not walking in the light which you know. The Bible says to him that knows to do good and does not. To him it is a sin. So Sin is a violation of light that you know. So when you know something and you still choose to do otherwise, is a violation of light that you know. This is one of the ways Satan will come in. Another way is to ignorant, like I said, you, you didn't know. That is why it's very important that we build up ourselves every day in the word of God. That we abide in the word of God. That we devote our time more in studying and knowing the word of God. So that we are not deceived because of ignorance. That's why it's very important that we go to churches where they teach the word of God. So we are not deceived from the pulpit. Because of error, 
a lot of errors have been preached from the pulpit. Remember the ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Because you don't know. It, 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 the, Satan doesn't say, okay, I'll let it go today because you are just a, a baby Christian. <laughs> you don't know. So I, I'm just going to let you go. And let me go find those uh, <laughs> mature Christians since they know already. No, the man doesn't do that. He is the accuser of the brethren. He is the destroyer, the devourer. All he does is just to find a tiny little door that is open. He goes in there to do his destruction. So that is why we got to spend more time in the word of God. So that we can know. We can know when not to open the door. We can know things not to do. We can know the, the consequences of things. That when we do them, we open the door to, 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 to Satan. Very, very important. And remember what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Remember? When he comes in or when he, when he loves you to open the door, he does it to the lust of the flesh. The Bible says, lust of the eyes and the pride of life. So this is the way he will, he, 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 will, he will influence you to open the door. But remember what I said earlier. He cannot force you to open this door for him to come in and bring these troubles, these problems, these difficulties in your life. You must be the one that will open the door for him. Right now you have authority over him so he cannot force you. He cannot. So now, what do you do? I'm going. I'm getting into the most important, the most important part of this teaching. Now is how do you get out of your troubles, the one that you've been waiting for, because you can, as a Christian, you can get out of your troubles and your problems. They are not meant for you. It is not the will of God that you go through life in misery, in difficulties, and in hardship, and in, 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 and in hard times. It's not the will of God. His will is for you to prosper and be of health, even as your soul prosper. So now that you know that these problems don't come from God, they come from Satan. How are you going to get him off your back? How are you going to let him out? Shut the door in his presence. And get him off your back. The first thing to do is to acknowledge. Are you hearing me somebody? Now I'm telling you how to get out of your problems and situations. And they work. Remember the word of God is quick and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. When you... Apply the word of God in your life. It works. It works. He will never change. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever his word is settled in heaven. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word would not. His word he has upholded above all his names. The Bible says. This universe, he uphold this universe by the word of his power. So the Bible tells us that he will watch over his word to perform it. So the word of God works. You that is listening to me now, the word of God works. If you put the word of God in place, it will always work for you. So now, the first thing you do is to acknowledge that these problems, they are not coming from God. And then you sh close the door right in front of Satan. Remember, he is the one who has come in to steal, to kill, to destroy, to steal from you. So you acknowledge that these problems are not from God. You shut the door just right in front of him. Understand fully that Satan is a defeated, created being. Satan is not God. Will never be God. 
He is a created being. God created him as Lucifer was one of the angels. But because of pride and arrogance, wanted to be like God, he failed and was cast out from heaven to this earth. That's what the Bible says. So remember, acknowledge that he is defeated. Jesus Christ already spoiled principalities and powers and made a public show of every one of them that he is now under your feet. Jesus says, Behold, I see Satan fall from heaven like lightning. And he says, I give you power over all the principalities and powers. And he said, Nothing by any means can harm you. Know that you have authority over him. Once you know that, another step to victory. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't be scared of him. Don't be scared. When you are afraid of something, the, what you are doing is to open the door for that to come and harm you. Set an oppress in the environment of fear. That's what feeds him. An environment of fear. Be bold and courageous. Be of good cheer. And stand your ground and say, I have victory and I have authority over Satan. Close the door right in his front, in his in his face. Don't wait for God to do it for you. Are you listening, my friends? This is where so many Christians miss it. Don't miss this one now because this is very important. Catch it now. Catch it and get hold of it like this. Don't let it slip by you. So many Christians believe and they stand in one place. They don't do anything for the simple reason because they are waiting on God to do something. Even though they have been given the authority from above, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, has given them the power and authority over Satan. Christians still wait for God to do the same thing that he has given them authority to do. If you are waiting for God to do something that he's giving you the authority to do, you're going to be waiting forever. Are you hearing me, somebody? There are things he has given us authority to do. There are two prayers God will not answer. Are you hearing me, somebody? Praying to God to do what he has given you the authority to do? Oh, you'll be praying for a very long time. And so many Christians, that's where they stand right now. Begging God to make Satan go away. Begging God to, to take problems out of their pot. Begging God to change their situation. God, change my situation. God, I have been in this predic predicament for a long time. God, why is it, this problem coming to me? What am I tempted like this? I have no more strength to bear it anymore. Take this problem away from me. Stop! Stop. Stop praying like that. He's, God is not going to answer that prayer. Why? He has given you authority over Satan. And I'm going to give you scriptures to tell you that you have authority over him. The second prayer God will not answer is when you are asking God to do what he has already done. Are you hearing me? That is why we got to put our nose in the word of God. To know the thing that we have been given authority to do. And the thing that God has already done for us. So we don't make prayers that are in vain. Are you hearing me somebody? Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in James chapter 4 verse 17. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. You couldn't resist him if you he, if he don't have authority over him. Are you hearing me my friends? So you stand your ground and he will flee. He said, no, Satan, this is not your place. You cannot bring this problem to me. I bind you and I command you to take your problems and get out. He will leave. Are you hearing me? In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, Bible says, give no place to Satan. So he will only come in when you give him a place. If you don't, he will not. Remember in Matthew chapter 28, when Jesus Christ arose from the from 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 from, 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 dead, from the dead, from the grave. He said, All power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. He said, Go. 
That is when he gave you the power there, the authority to stand in his name. So you have authority over him. The moment you understand that you have authority over him, it takes you very close to the victory. We are called to be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We have been called to be victors, not victims. Overcomers, not overcome. So we don't give any place to him because the, he comes in for one reason, still kill, destroy. That's what he's on for. That's what he's known for. Now that you've known this part so far, what are you going to do when the trouble present themselves to you? You already know they are not from God. And you have taken your authority knowing that this, they come from Satan and you have, you, you have authority over him. What else are you going to do? The Bible says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. When you go through diverse tests, which means different types of trials. That's what James is saying in, in James chapter 1 verse 2. Count it all joy. Begin to renew your mind with the word of God. It is very, very important that you know what the word of God says about that situation. Remember that Satan can bring sickness to your body, symptoms now, just to see if you will accept them or welcome them through the way you believe or through the way you talk. But remember that what the word of God says that Jesus Christ took our infirmities and bare our diseases. By his stripes we are healed. He sent his word and delivered them and healed them and delivered them from every destruction, from their destruction. So you know that Jesus Christ has already paid the price for you. So when he presents the symptoms, you're going to close the door right in front of him by rejecting them. Not by welcoming them and saying, God is using this disease just to try me. Just to increase my piety or my humility or my association in his sufferings. Once you say that, then you open the door. Satan comes in and that situation stays on you. Are you hearing me? So now, know what the word of God says. Is he trying to block your finances? Know what the word of God says. He gives us all things richly to all enjoy. He is a God of abundance. He's blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He always causes us to triumph and gives us victory in Christ Jesus. His will is for us to prosper and be in health. So if he steps in to block your finances, stand your ground because you know what the word of God says and kick him out with the word of God. Now, one thing you got to know is this. Even though the troubles are presented to you, doesn't mean that they stay. No, they don't stay. Like I told you earlier, they, probably, they came in because a door was open. Find out why, where the door, why, where the door was opened. Why you opened the door. Find out how the door got opened. Are you hearing me? And repent immediately. Repent immediately. And close that door. Because I said, like I told you earlier, he can only come in through an open door. That's the way he operates. Remember that this problem, because they present themselves to you, doesn't mean they got to stay. If there are financial problems, or there are health problems, or other difficulties or situations, you name them. Marriage issues, children issues, Job issues. Because they present themselves doesn't mean they got to stay. No. Count them as a light affliction. They are light affliction that will just. 
They came so that they will go. Light affliction. Count them as light affliction. If we go through the life of Apostle Paul, the thing that he called light affliction, it will baffle you in his own life. We know. You know all the things he went through. Three times he was shipwrecked. He was flogged so many times. And many, many times he was even beaten with rods. Frequently he was in prisons. He was in danger from bandits, from the Jews. And all of these things, Apostle Paul called them light affliction. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's go, let's go and read. Let, let's, 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 let's read. It's very interesting to see what is, what, this light affliction, what it talks about light affliction. You know, go with me. I can quote it to you, but I want you to go with me so we can read it together. Go with me to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to read verse, um, verse 17 and 18. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're going to read 17 and 18. Let me read the NLT translation for you. you, you you're going to like this one. You see what it says. NLT translation. It says, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Did you hear that? I'll read it again. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. It says, yet they produce for us a glory that uh, vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Did you, did you catch that? He's talking about the light affliction now. He, he says they are small and they will not last forever. Verse 18. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Are you hearing that, my friends? We don't look at the troubles that we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. What are the things that cannot be seen? What the word of God says concerning that problem. If it is sickness, the word of God says by his stripes you were healed. That's what you fix. He says, do not look at the trouble that you can see. The symptoms is what is physical. Don't look at the symptoms. Rather, look at what the word of God says about it. By his stripes, I am healed. So, verse 18 says, So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the thing that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. That's what I'm telling you. Troubles don't last forever. They don't last. Every trouble that shows up has an expiration date. When, this, when it expires... <laughs> it goes, it goes. It's just like a, a gallon of milk. The moment you grab it, the expiration date starts, kicks in. It begins to deteriorate. It begins to fade. So that's the way the troubles are. He said, for the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the troubles come so that they can go. They don't last forever. Once you identify the root of the problem, how it came into your life, get the door. Close the door. Close it right away. Repent and command those troubles to get out of your path. Do not wait for God to do what he has asked you to do or what he has given you authority to do. He will not be done. If you're waiting for him to do it, you're going to be waiting forever. Catch it and put an, end, put an end to that problem. Are you hearing me? So look at all the problems Paul went through and yet he called them light affliction. So don't let the situation that you find yourself in weigh you down. Remember, God is always for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Who can successfully be against you? There is none. 
So now, remember what Jeremiah 32, verse 27 says. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? <laughs> Is there anything too hard for me? Is that a sickness or a disease? God is saying, is it too hard for me? Is that a loss of a job? God is saying, giving you a new one, is it too hard for me? Is that a family crisis? God is saying, giving you peace, is that too hard for me? Is that a financial problems? God is saying, opening the door for you, is it too hard for me? Trust in God. Know that he is your heavenly father. That he wants all the best for you. Remember that God is always there for you. He is there. He's not going to leave you like an orphan. One that doesn't have any helper. He will always provide the help for you. But all you got to do is to trust in him. Have faith in him. Without faith it's impossible to please him. Let him that comes believe that he is. So you got to believe that he is God. And that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18. Says surely there is an end. And the expectations will not be cut off. An end of what? End to that trouble, to that problem, to that situation. Remember, regardless of how he, come, he, he came in, whether you open the door ignorantly or you open the door by not walking on the light that you know, it doesn't matter. There is an end to it. <coughs> Excuse me. There is an end to it. So now, <clears throat> the Bible tells us in um, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5, Weeping may endure to the night, but joy comes in the morning. There will always be joy. It will always come. There will always be deliverance. But do not wait for God to do what he's asked you to do. You know, I keep saying this part because it's very important. There are so many Christians who have troubles that have been in there for a long time. Troubles that won't go away. And they are faithful Christians. But these troubles, they linger around. They've had them for so many years. Just for the simple reason that they are waiting for God to do what he's asked them to do. Don't. Don't. Take authority today. Cast that evil one out. Command him to leave. Command him to take his hands off your, off your, off your, off your life. He will leave, remember. In the name of Jesus, he will. Because he understands. The authority that you have now in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what else do you do? The next thing that you do is surround yourself with a positive people. Are you hearing me? Get yourself some people who believe the way that you do. Don't surround yourself with people who will... Tell you that this problem is from God. That these problems we don't understand if they will ever go away. Don't surround yourself with people who don't have faith in God. And then recite your problems over and over to them. And then they will feed you with their unbelief even more. And the situation or the problem remains or even get worse. No, find you people who believe, who will encourage you, who will agree with you, who will lift up the, the release faith together with you to give you the victory that you desire, you deserve in the name of Jesus Christ. Another very important thing is that the way you talk, 
the way you talk. When you, are, when you find yourself in these problems, the way you talk is very important. Bible says that death and life are in the hand or in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. He says those who desire them will eat the fruit thereof. In Proverbs chapter 6 verse 2, the Bible says, We are snared by the words of our mouth. So what are you saying when you are going through these problems? Matters a lot. Your words, you want to be speaking things that are positive. Speaking things that are able to change your situation. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which I say shall come to pass will have whatever he says. What the Bible says in Mark eleven twenty three. What are you saying in the midst of those problems? Your words have to be words that will lift you out. Not the ones that will hem you in and keep you there. Two ways God created the heavens and the earth. Faith filled words. And he uphold the universe by the word of his power. And we who have been called to be imitators of Christ, to followers of Christ, we ought to walk the way that Master did, the way Jesus Christ walked. He calmed the roaring sea. Even the wind, he put them to a still position. The fig tree had his words and they withered from the root. So now, what are you saying in the midst of your troubles? Your words ought to be, I am coming out of this problem. Your words ought to be, if God be for me, who can be against me? Your words ought to be, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Your words ought to be, these two shall come to pass. Your words ought to be, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Your words ought to be, the angels are walking on my behalf. Your words ought to be, I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. My friends, if you are willing to stand, if you are willing to face it, if you are willing to do what the word of God says, your problems will not be lingering around, but they will disappear and they will melt away. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I have come to the end of today's teaching. You, if you are listening to me right now and you are not yet born again, you are not a Christian, you don't, you're not sure where you go if you die right now. If your spirit you're not sure where your spirit goes if your spirit was to leave your body right now. The Bible makes us understand there are only two destinations that a spirit can go after death. Those two destinations are hell or heaven. And those are real places. They exist. Going to heaven is where God is. And the sp spending eternity with him is only for those who have met Jesus Christ, their Lord and their Savior on earth while they are still alive. Not after they are dead and they hope that somebody will pray them into heaven. Jesus Christ made this available to everyone who is on the earth right now with no exception. Is available to all. He paid the price. He went to the cross. He died. Was buried. Went to hell. Suffered everything. And sacrificed his blood. For the sins of all mankind. Washed away all our sins in his own precious blood. 
But now he's asking you to receive. Because these precious gifts of righteousness, salvation, eternal life is free of charge. It's free of charge to anyone who would believe and receive by faith. Don't say, let me go and uh, clean myself and make my, my path right. You could not. Jesus Christ wants you to come just as you are. When you receive what he did for you and become born again, then your part by the enablement of his spirit, you can live the life of the righteous. So today is an opportunity. Don't let this one pass you by again. You may be a member of a church, but you don't understand what I mean by somebody being born again. But I'm going to explain it to you right now. To be born again, if you're a member of a church and you don't know why am I born again or not, what is born again? Have this understanding right now so that you can make that call to know if you're born again or you are not. To be born again means that not only, <clears throat> are you hearing me? Not only do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Not only do you believe that he died for your sins and went to hell and God raised him up from the dead on the third day. Just believing that will not make you born again. Just like somebody believing that Abraham Lincoln was lived in the past. They believe all right. But that wasn't that will not make you a Christian. You will have to after you believe. That he is the son of God. He died for your sins. God raised him up from the dead on the third day. You got to ask him. To come into your life. And be your Lord and your savior. You got to have a personal relationship with him. So being a member of a church. And being baptized in the water. Will not give you salvation. Salvation is. You believe in Jesus Christ. That God raised him from the dead. And you, then you ask him to come into your life. And be your Lord and your Savior. And now you establish a personal relationship with him. That is what born, being born again means. If you have not done this. Regardless of your status. If you are a Christian or you are, if you are a member of a church or you are not. Now is the moment. I'm going to lead you now in a very short prayer. Pray with all your heart and mean it from the depth of your heart. And your life, you will become a new creature right now. Your spirit, that is what gets born again. Your spirit, not your flesh or your mind. Your mind, you will renew it with the word of God after you get born again. And your flesh will be the same. The way it was. Before and after, it will still remain the same. But this flesh, we are promised in the word of God, it will be glorified. At some, some time, some day it will be glorified. And it will be like the body of Jesus Christ right now, as he is in heaven. So pray this prayer with me, my friends. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. And you raise him up from the dead on the third day. Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe I'm born again now. My spirit is recreated. And I'm a child of God. I thank you, Father, for this golden opportunity and privilege. Blessed be the holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, friends, if you pray that prayer, I will come into the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God and you are born again. If you would die right now, you go be with Jesus Christ in heaven. 
Now, there is another experience that is subsequent to salvation. The, we call it baptism of the Holy Spirit or infilling of the Holy Spirit of God. It is evidenced by speaking with other tongues. So, I do have a teaching on my archive on YouTube. I, 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 the, the title is uh, Speaking in Tongues is for Every Believer. If you will get hold of that teaching, it will help you, teach you, so that you will understand how to be filled with the Spirit of God and speak with other tongues. Friends, now that you are born again, just like in the natural, you are a baby Christian now. So it's very important, splendid for us, that you find a very good church where they teach the Word of God so that you can grow. So that Satan will not take advantage of you. My friends, remember, it is only those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. They are the ones who will get the full benefits of the word of God. And surely, as always, there is an end. And your expectations will not be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.